This is Scott Cunningham, owner and founder of Arclight Dynamics. And this is the first in a series of videos designed to help you learn to operate your Arc Pro X and Arc Max plasma cutting systems. So first off, I'd like to mention that I highly, highly recommend you go through each of these training videos, both on how to operate your table and how to operate sheet cam. This is very important as you can often get a little bit of knowledge and run the table by watching a few of the videos or reading the manual, but you're not going to get all the details. And it's the details that are very important and in the end can save you a lot of time and money and wasted materials or poor cut quality um, if you know all the tips and tricks. So first I want to start off by mentioning that this is a Linux based system, so it's slightly different than a Windows system. So for the most part, you're not going to have to, it's going to be very similar in your operation as far as uh, looking for files and whatnot, but it is slightly different. So I recommend you take your time to get to know it. The first thing I want to mention is their power on and off button is up here. If you click on this icon up here, it pulls up what's similar to the Windows start menu. So your power button is down here. Again, just with any computer, very important. You must shut down the computer properly. Do not just press in the green button and hold it. That's a hard shutdown and it can lead to memory errors and problems. So, um, Moving on, uh, this is your desktop. For the most part, it's going to look similar. It might look slightly different. We have your programs down here, Inkscape, QCAD, for designing your parts, sheet cam for nesting up your parts, and then this is the control software. You have two different profiles here, plasma and a router profile, and some people may have a pipe cutting profile. Each profile is specific to the operation that it does, and so you, you cannot use the plasma profile with the pipe cutting profile or vice versa. Um, you must make sure you click on the correct profile in order for the machine to operate correctly. And then down below here, we have some manuals that uh, discuss the different programs and how to operate your system. Highly recommend you go through those. Um, now, for starters, this video is assuming that you have gone through the quick start guide and set your machine up correctly. If you go up to here, your program machine manuals and you have the quick start guide right here you will also have a hard copy of it we highly recommend you must go through that manual first to ensure that all your connections are correct and set up properly so that the machine will run and operate properly we will not be covering those connections in those videos and lastly I want to mention down here we have this hub utility and the configurator, command CNC configurator. For the most part, you don't need to go into these. and We do not recommend you go into these and change any settings unless you're specifically told to by one of our technicians. Um, making a small change in either one of these programs can make your system inoperable. So, so let's start by powering up command CNC. And so we're going to hit on the plasma profile and that's going to pull up your command CNC control system. Now when it pulls up it will be in e-stop by default. So in order to pull it out of e-stop you have to have your motor power on. If you look at the front of your control box there's a red and green button that says on and off. By hitting the on button you will turn the motor power on. Okay, that's key. If you don't turn your motor power on, you will not be able to pull the machine out of e-stop. And the second thing you have to do is make sure that your e-stop button is not depressed. If you look on the left side of your control box, your cabinet, there's a big red mushroom button. That must not be pushed in. It has, if you twist it, it'll pop out. So often that will get pushed in during shipping. And um, if you don't realize it, you won't be able to pull your machine out of e-stop and run the table. So, um, when one last thing about the motor power. Whenever you have the motor power on, you never want to plug in or unplug your motor wires. 
okay the motor wires are on the back of the control box so if for any reason you have to unplug those make sure your motor power is off okay so I'm gonna pull this up here I'm gonna maximize this screen um, if you hit F11 on your keyboard it will go totally full screen but in order to get it back out of this position and close it down because obviously you can't do anything in here uh, you have to hit F11 again so generally don't recommend you utilize that so let's pull it out of e-stop when we click on this e-stop active button and it turns it off now once it's out of e-stop I'm gonna pull up our webcam so you can see the machine we're gonna jog the machine so we've already gone over this in the quick sort guide but we'll review it your arrow keys control your jogging so if I hit my arrow key to the left it moves the x-axis to the left which is the negative direction If I hit arrow key to the right it moves it to the right in the positive direction if I hit the up arrow it will move the gantry away from me in the positive direction if I hit the down arrow it will move the gantry towards me in the negative direction now if I hit page up and page down which are right above the arrow keys that controls the z-axis up and down okay so a little more about jogging your jog speed is determined by this slider bar right down here at the bottom of your screen and the speed at which you're jogging is displayed in the feed rate so as I jog it tells me how fast I am moving if I change this slider I will now jog faster okay so what I recommend is you set it to a position that is comfortable to you for making small moves okay so say I wanna jog down get close to this plate here and I don't wanna have to move close to the edge to start my cut okay so this for me this 31 30 percent it's a good jog speed now say for an instance I want to speed the machine up and jog it to the back of the table out of the way or over to the other side of the table there's two ways I could do it I can slide my jog slider all the way over and it will I will be able to jog or I can hit the shift button if I hit the shift button and hold it down while I jog the machine will automatically go into full speed jog so full speed 600 inches a minute if I let go of the shift I'm back to the slower jog that I have set in the slider okay now currently our jog type is set to continuous if I click on this I can change it to what is called a step increment okay so if I hit say 0.1 or a tenth of an inch every time I hit the arrow key the machine will move one tenth of an inch now this is very useful for precise positioning of the torch okay so quite often I will use the 0 0.01 and it allows me to tap the machine over for precise alignment now making sure that now I can also use the scroll wheel on my mouse when this is this button is active to scroll through the different sizes but before you start with so often you'll use this for aligning up the cut prior to making it um, one thing you want to remember is to move it back to continuous before you run the part because often what will happen is your part will finish cutting and then you'll attempt to jog it say out of the way but you have it set to a step distance and you know you'll be like you'll press your key to jog it and the machine doesn't move and you're like why is my machine broken it's not going any well it is it's only going a short distance so it's a common error and it can trip you up even the best of us so set it back to continuous when you're done 
making your moves. Okay, so you won't run into that problem. Um, so now that's the basics on jogging. So now I want to talk about setting up your home position. This is very important. There are two positions. There's machine home and your part home. Okay, your machine home is set when you first open up the command CNC software and do the first homing. That's when it sets the machine home. So every time you power up, you must do a machine home. So let me jog this, move this guy over a little bit. So here are my DROs or digital readouts showing my position according to the computer. Okay, so we need to set these so these are properly set for our machine. So the first thing you're going to do is make sure your Z axis is probably, oh, give yourself three inches. Make sure it's three inches off the plate. Okay. And then secondly, you're going to make sure there's nothing in the way of the gantry moving towards the front of the table up against the home switches or nothing in the way of the X axis moving over towards the left of the table. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring the machine, the gantry up towards the front of the table. And then I'm going to hit home Y. Once I hit this button, the machine is going to slowly move towards the front of the table and it's going to move each side independently until it hits the home switch and then it will back up a little bit. And what this has the effect of doing is squaring up your gantry. If for whatever reason your gantry got out of square, it was pushed or moved when the machine was powered down, you bumped into it, that means your gantry is out of square. So it needs to square itself. So what holds your gantry square is the motors when they are powered up. So I'm going to hit home Y. The machine's going to move towards the front and home itself out. Okay. Now once it's homed out, I can go zero Y. Next I'm going to go home X. The machine's going to move over towards the left hit the home switch and then move back and I'm going to go 0x. And Now the last thing you want to do is home your Z axis. Now to do this you can either put a place plate or you can jog over a piece of plate and you can just go home Z and then go 0z. Or in the event you don't have a piece of plate you can simply jog the machine close to the surface and then zero it. As long as you're very close, it won't make a difference. Now there are two really key things to hear when your machine is set up, okay? So by setting the zero position, we set the soft limits. Now the soft limits are represented by this dotted red line, okay? So the soft limits prevent the machine from moving too far, essentially, and crashing. Okay? So if I move all the way to the left, you will see my position. As you can see, it stopped it. It doesn't allow it to go past the home switch, even though there is room for me to continue to move the computer is saying, no, you can't go past that. Okay, if I move towards the front, the same thing is going to happen. It stops right there at the dotted line, preventing me from going that far. And so preventing me from crashing to the hard stops. Okay, the same thing happens on the back. So these soft limits are very important, very useful, but you must set your machine zero when you first power up control C, command C and C in order for them to operate properly. If you don't, they can cause problems for you. We're not going to go into that now. That will be covered in error recovery and how you take care of errors, uh, another video, but just very important. Golden rule, always set your machine zero. Now the next set is your part zero. Okay. Now say I want to make a cut on this piece of plate right here and I want to make it on the lower left of the part. 
I can go into that position and then zero out my X, Y, and Z. Okay, so you can see that the machine traces where your position was. Hitting this little button here, clear toolpath, eliminates that. Okay, so let's zoom in. So as you can see, okay, one thing, navigating this tool, if I hold down the right mouse button and scroll in, it zooms. If I hit the left mouse button, it drags it around. And also using the mouse wheel zooms it. Okay, so it has determined, it remembers the home, the machine home, but it has set a new part zero here. Okay, so if I loaded up a part, it would appear right here and it would cut out in this area. Okay, so <clears throat> that's the key difference. There's machine home and part home. Very important that you first home your machine when you power it up. Okay. The thing I want to mention that is relative to the machine home and the reason why we set it is if you go under manual, okay, you have a load material button. This position is set at the factory to maximize your travel. And if you hit load material, the machine will move to this position. First, it will move the Z axis up two inches, and then it will move back to the back corner of the machine. So if I hit load material, up, and jogs out of the way. So that's your load material button. So I'm gonna go back to the auto and jog the machine back. Now to do this, I'm gonna hit the shift button so it jogs quickly. Okay, so driving that manually. So uh, that's basically it for powering up the system, jogging it, always homing it when you first load it up, very important. And one last thing I wanna mention here is these material stops, which are right here on the left, okay? Often when you get your machine, they will be positioned um, kind of near the front of the table. You can loosen these bolts up, slide them down the slot to space them out. And these stops can be adjusted in or out to fine tune the system. So basically what you want to do, if you put a piece of like a straight edge up against it, you want to run the torch down the edge of that straight edge and determine is it act are these stops straight compared to the motion of the torch. Just because you know this is the side of the table doesn't mean it's going to be exact alignment to this. So you may need to do minute adjustments to these stops in or out. So get your stops set up properly. You'll be really happy because you'll it'll allow you to put plate up against it and not be concerned about it. And these stops can also be rotated so that they can kind of stick up higher or lower to prevent them from uh, your torch from catching on it as it cuts along an edge. Okay, so depending on how close to the edge you are, you may need to lower these so that your machine does not hit this stop and knock the torch. Okay, so that's it for the first video. Thank you very much for watching.